Welcome everyone for another episode of Ask a Paranormal Investigator. I'm your host, Matthew Baxter. Now, I've been a paranormal investigator for about 30 years and uh, about half of that time I spent as a true believer in the paranormal. Um, wanted to believe everything that I came across. Uh, the other half of that time I spent as a, pretty much a cynic. Um, called myself a skeptic, but I was pretty much a cynic, truth be told. Now, in this series, I really try to bridge the gap between those two because there are times where a good, healthy dose of skepticism can save you a lot of uh, embarrassment, headache, and pain. Um, and then there's other times where, you know, the soul really needs some belief. So let's, let's see if we can do both here. Now, once again, I am here talking about something strange. Uh, seems to be my, <laughs> my lot in life, I guess you'd say. Now, <clears throat> recently, I, I have a five-year-old son, and I uh, love him to death. His name is Blade. He came up to me, as he normally does, and asked for a particular toy. Now, the toys he asked for could be anything from Thomas the Tank Engine to a, a truck, um, to a puzzle, uh, lots of different things that he has uh, of interest in. Um, he definitely is into uh, YouTube and Roblox and Minecraft. So he came up to me and he wanted a siren head. A siren head? What the heck is siren head? Well, hopped on Google and uh, thought I'd take a quick look. And indeed, siren head is there. Now, it does not look like uh, he is licensed to any company to be mass produced. So you see a lot of Etsy making siren head toys and they're a bit more expensive or they're poorly made. Um, we have siren head costumes for little kids. We have plush toys, a lot of plush toys for siren head, or of siren head for kids. Um, so little, little kids are into siren head and I, I'm not exactly sure why. When you look at siren head, he's kind of scary. So what is the deal with this guy? So, I thought I would do a little more searching. And uh, what did I find? Meet Siren Head, a horrifying monster haunting the internet. So, okay. So it says here the Siren Head's been around the internet for a couple of years. It's become part of internet folklore, a creation of artist Trevor Henderson. Uh, Siren Head is a tall, fleshy creature whose head is a pole with two speakers attached. It lurks in wooded areas, emitting disturbing noises. Sometimes there are distorted radio reports, a weird garbled pieces of music. Sometimes it's distressed people screaming for help. Now, from what I've seen of Siren Head, he's also got these teeth inside the, of his speakers. And he likes to try to attract people uh, with, his, uh, with his sirens with the different sounds he puts out and attracts them into the woods and then kills them. Um, so yeah, uh, not, not a real great guy, but uh, he's, uh, he's pretty creepy, pretty scary. And he shares a lot of similarities with Slender Man. Um, and I'll go a little bit more into Slender Man here shortly. But what I wanted to do is look at a couple of different things here. First off, Let's, uh, let's see what they're trying to do here. They are trying to make Slender Man real, basically. He is definitely a work of fiction, but you go on YouTube and there are videos after videos of Siren Head sightings in real life. Now, of course, when you look at these, they are fake. You know, it's not convincing at all. But uh, yeah, there's, there's just a ton of these videos. So little kids watching this could very well believe that Siren Head is indeed real. And that's where it gets a little creepy for me. Um, and I'll explain why in a few moments. But just for fun, I'm sure you guys want to hear what Siren Head sounds like. So let's, let's play a little bit. So I'm going to skip through this a little bit. Emergency broadcast system. Oh. 
It's random noises. It was kind of terrifying. I'm not even exactly sure how that is supposed to uh, attract people, to be honest. Um, but the thing is, is with this being um, a, uh, uh, a trying to make it real kind of situation, that concerns me uh, because <clears throat> it's happened before with, with Slender Man. Now, back in 2014, Slender Man was a very popular character that was created, completely fictional, but he was created in such a way that it was, uh, he was up for grabs for other sources to bring him into their stories. And that made him spread like wildfire, I guess you'd say. And Siren Head is experiencing the same thing right now. All right, so let's look at something that really does concern me. So, May 31st, 2014, two 12-year-old girls in Wisconsin held down and stabbed a 12-year-old classmate 19 times. Now, she did survive. She managed to escape and make it back out to a main road where she was found. Um, but uh, the girls were questioned about why they did this, and they claimed that they wished to commit a murder as a first step to becoming proxies for the Slender Man. Um, now they read about him online. Now, they also stated that they were afraid that Slender Man would kill their families if they did not commit the murder. So, it, it has been uh, clearly stated that both the attackers have been diagnosed with mental illness. Um, but they've also been charged as adults and they're each facing up to 65 years in prison for it. Now, one of the girls reportedly said that Slender Man watches her, can read minds, and could teleport. Um, now, this is this falls into several different areas that, that gets a little creepy. Number one is you have a certain uh, number of people that believe that Slender Man was brought into reality by thought forms. Enough people believing in him eventually he became real. He was pulled into this world. And uh, that, that's not one that I subscribe to. But he was real to them. Now, you know, me having a five-year-old that's interested in Siren Head, should I be concerned that, you know, of course, five-year-old brain, everything's got a certain amount of realness to it. Should I be worried about that? Well, I don't want to necessarily grow up to be my parents. Uh, the, the, the PMRC and everything else that happened in my youth um, with, you know, all of a sudden rock and roll lyrics were bad and we're going to, you know, corrupt you and, and uh, you know, heavy metal music in general is going to get you. And then it became video games were terrible and they were going to cause all this violence and uh, watching uh, cartoons with too much violence and it was going to be a problem and, and it just really more and more escalated. And, and the video games continue to get more violent, and yet we didn't really see in crime statistics that, that it bared out that children were going to be more violent. Uh, it didn't really happen. Now, of course, we did have things like the James Holmes uh, murders. That was uh, the Aurora Theater shooting, where this gentleman was obsessed with the Joker and ended up going into a movie theater and just shooting everybody. Uh, it killed a ton of people. You're not going to watch Batman and suddenly do that. Batman's not going to drive you to do that. Uh, James Holm had an underlying mental disorder. And that was the problem. Not Batman. Not the Joker. So it, it's, it's, I think it's a really important thing to underline. You know, I don't want to 
jump on, you know, just because of a little parental fear, suddenly feel like, oh, I have to protect my son from something that's popular. I just don't believe that's how it works. And to, to push a little further into this, um, it, it says here that uh, one of the girls in this stabbing um, said that she also conversed with Lord Voldemort, he show, uh, who should not be named, and uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles she had conversed with. So that, that tells you that it wasn't just a matter of Slender Man, you know, becoming real and getting into her head. It was a matter of her having underlying issues. Um, it could have been anything that had driven her to this. So you can't blame popular culture. You just can't. It's not, not fair to do that. So uh, when, we, when we get down to things, get back to here. When we get down to things, I, I really think that we have to put more faith in our kids. We have to put more faith in the fact that as they grow older, as they get more mature, they have the ability to separate fact from fiction. Now, not everybody does. Uh, you know, we see that in, in our modern day politics. Um, not everybody can separate fact from fiction. But the bottom line is, is most of us can, and, and the ones that can't still tend to be pretty safe. The people that are dangerous are an incredibly small number of people compared to the population. Um, so is it okay for my son to like Siren Head? Well, absolutely, I think it is. And uh, since I couldn't find one online, I made him one. And uh, so it's, it's got its little sirens there and the weird skeletal figure. And, and he adores it. He loves it. This is a, a great toy for him. He plays with it a lot. Um, but he plays with it as much as he does the rest of his toys as well. So I have to say, I'm, I'm not worried. I think it's okay. We're going to be okay, everybody. Um, <laughs> just take it one day at a time. So... It's interesting to think that this week, that's probably one of the, uh, the less weird things that uh, I've been exposed to, uh, you know, with the, the media and everything that's going on in the world. So, but it's nice to step away from all the other crazy reality and talk about something that is absolutely fiction for a change. Um, once again, everybody, like, subscribe, definitely click the like button, please. Uh, it makes a big difference. And uh, tell your friends, let's build this channel. Come on, let's build it. I'll see you guys next time on Ask a Paranormal Investigator.